for that. All right. Um, so now what we're doing, okay, is in the last video we actually factored this thing. Okay, um, I'll just show it to you. We did all this work right here. So um, we're going to, um, this will be your opportunity to see me do this in real time, okay, about how fast I would normally do this, all right? So I'm not going to narrate you through the factoring part. Once we get to the factoring part, then I am going to, um, I'm going to walk you through using the zero product property and we will, uh, we will solve this, all right? Because that's the whole goal of factoring is to get um, your polynomial to a place where you can solve it and figure out what your zeros are because otherwise you're just playing with weird numbers and what's the point of that? Okay, so here I go. So you're gonna follow along, all right? The one thing I will do is I will say we're using that whole AX squared for BX plus C, right? The AC, you go A times C, right? And that's gonna give you your thing and then those gotta add, also add up to your B, okay? And so that's, that's where we're at, that's what I'm going for and then we're gonna decompose this thing. Again, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, watch the earlier video to this. Watch the companion video to this and now here I go. So I'm gonna go. Times negative three gives me negative six. Two factors of negative six that are gonna add up to negative five are going to be negative six and one. Okay, I don't need to add them all up because I can figure that out. All right, now I'm rewriting this. It's n. I'm not going to write 1 n. I'm just going to go plus n. All right, minus 3. Okay. And uh, let's make sure I did this right. Negative 6 times 1. Negative 6. This is 6. What did I do? Oh, yeah, same thing. I just wrote it different. Okay. Sounds good. Um, that's actually good because you guys will see a different look for this. So we get n minus 3. And I want n minus 3 over here, which means it has to be plus 1. And that's right. That's right. Good. All right. So now I pull out my n minus 3 and my 2n plus 1. And so what you see when I went through this, right, in much quicker, right, I wound up with the same factors, but I did it kind of the other way. So hopefully that kind of you know, extenuates the fact that it doesn't matter which way you go when you break the factors up. It's going to work either way. It's just your your greatest common factor you pull out is going to be different on those two, and your common factor, your common binomial that you pull out will be different. In this one, my common binomial was n minus 3, and this one, my common binomial was 2n plus 1. Either way, you still wind up with the same things. All right, now, the zero product property states that in order for this to equal zero, right, because technically all this, you know, equals zero because it's this equation just being rewritten and then factored. Um, in order for this to equal zero, that means one of these or both need to equal zero themselves. This either needs to equal zero, this needs to equal zero, or both of them equal zero. So in this case, right, so what we do is we set up two mini equations. So you set this one equal to zero and you set this one equal to zero. Because those are the ways you can force this to be zero. All right, so then you just solve your mini equations. So I got n minus 3. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and then you get n equals 3. All right, this one, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides and get 2n equals negative 1. And then my last step is to divide each of them by 2, and you get n equals negative 1 half. And so my solutions for this are n equal negative one half and three. I like to write them neatly like that. If you don't want to do that, just make sure then what you do is that you circle your solutions so that we can see what they are, right? And so if I put either one of these into this original equation here, that will zero it out. It will work. So like two times three squared is nine. Two times nine is 18 minus 5 times 3 is 15. 18 minus 15 is positive 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. And if I use negative 1 half, this will give me 1 fourth times 2, which is 1 half. Right? I'm going to write this down. And then negative 5 times negative 1 half gives me positive 5 halves. Right? And then minus 3. Well, I can just add this up. 
right? Because they have a, they have a common denominator. So one plus five is six. Six halves is three. And now if I take that and put this in place of that, I get three minus three, which equals zero. So yeah, they work out, right? And I'm a happy person. So that's how the zero product property works. It's it's pretty simple and straightforward. You're going to use this anytime you do any kind of factoring, whether it's what this kind of factoring or you wind up doing completing the square. Um, and if you wind up with something, well, actually, no, that's not zero product property. Pretty much a fact, right? But just understanding that two things multiplying together to give you zero means that at least one of them has to be zero, right? And so you you come up with the case where each of them could be zero, and those are your solutions. All right, next video, we will see you.